Okay, so part three is changing structure of in urban settlements. We've got the models to look at, the influences, and what's kind of the patterns and trends that's happening. And then we're going to look at how segregation has occurred in some of these urban areas. So the first model to look at is the Burgess concentrated uh, or concentric uh, model. Um, again, actually, as you're going through this, just make sure you kind of stop after each one. I am talking very fast often, so just make sure you're taking it all in and understanding it as you go. Okay, so we start off with the CBD, the Central Business District. So if we're looking at it from a very historical perspective, this is where the center is going to be. Uh, outside of that, industry would have developed, let's say, in, in Western European cities or North American cities, uh, industry starts to develop outside of there. And that's where a lot of people would end up living close to because they needed to walk to work every day, right? So that was the main cause of urbanization during the Industrial Revolution, right? So that's generally speaking what would have happened, low class residential. Further out from that might be medium class residential. Now you're talking about people who have the means in which to travel maybe to work or they're not connected directly with the manufacturing industry. And then we have high class residential further out, not needing immediate access to industrial areas and maybe having transportation options. So those are uh, like a standard kind of model of a city. Now, obviously not every city follows this, but you might be able to go in and see like, for example, the industrial center might not be there anymore, but it might function as something else like uh, the way we looked at the Canary Wharf, right? And the last one has gone under uh, urban renewal. So let's have a look at each of these kind of brackets and areas of the city and have a quick discussion. So the CBD, what it was, it was a historical center castles, cathedrals, mosques, political centers, they're all kind of based in the, the CBD and then it expanded outward. So we're often going to find older architecture. We're going to find um, actually very small roads often in a lot of older cities because it wasn't built to hold such huge volumes of traffic. Um, and usually uh, that's where the, the marketplace would have been and that was the economic hub. So that was the central point where you had the market, you had all the facilities. Banks and financial institutes were able to occupy uh, the higher rental costs and these exp and build expensive buildings in this area and you would have seen like um, the aristocracy living close to the CBD okay so that's what it was in the past now since then obviously times have changed now what we see is in cities that were like that we would find that um, a lot of the older buildings might be renovated they're kept historically um, but they're made sure that they keep up to date. We see that a lot of these streets that might not have been well purposed for cars are now pedestrian areas where people can walk on foot and that includes foot traffic. And um, we also see the development of like high rise and skyscrapers to show the center of the city. Some areas like Shanghai have two kind of central areas. They've got a skyscraper, modern central area, and then an old historical CBD. We're going to find uh, business, retail, restaurants, communication. Now the businesses are a little bit smaller because, well, they need foot traffic and they need to be able to sell enough products to keep up with the high rental prices. We often see parks and green areas that have survived this long are very much protected to have open space, like in the center of Chicago, for example. And we also see that there's not going to be really heavy industry space in the CBD anymore at all because you're not going to have things like air pollution and to be honest, to have something like a factory inside the CBD would be so expensive that it wouldn't make sense business wise. Um, we would see that financial institutes might be there, but they might not have their headquarters there anymore, for example, because they don't really need people coming in off the street, going into headquarters. They might need a small branch of the bank in order to deal with the demand from people, right, just for day to day things. But they don't need to have their headquarters there anymore. Transportation links will often lead to the CBD and the highest concentrations will be around there. So you'll see like lots of uh, subway metro links or you will find lots of bus links or tram links that goes into the center and all major roads generally try to veer into the center of it as well. Uh, modern day cities, kind of ones that have been uh, built in the last maybe 100 or 200 years, uh, grid patterns are often observed in those CBD areas for more modern builds. Okay, guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them.
hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video. Thank you.